I want to address the Neanderthal nation. I'm going live tonight. I want to address the Neanderthal nation. The Caucasian community. You have been cyber stalking me for 48 hours and I don't mind. I don't mind. You can continue to do it as long as you want because I don't care if the opinion of every Caucasian is to the contrary. I say what I mean to say and I stand on everything I say 10 toes down. But let me say this to the Caucasian community. When I look at the responses from America's Caucasian community over this issue of Eminem being the goat of hip hop. And let me say this, I have nothing personal against Eminem. My comments on the Joe Button podcast had nothing to do with Mr. Marshall Mathers personally. This is not personal. This is business. Eminem, I want you to hear me, young man. This is not personal. This is business. I said that no non-African can ever be the best of anything in African culture. You can't be the best cook of African food. You can't be the best rapper of African hip hop. You can't be the best singer. You can't be the best priest of African culture. Nothing we create can a non-African be the best at. First of all, it makes absolutely no sense at all. Haven't they stolen enough from us? Haven't they appropriated enough from us? Haven't they robbed, steal, killed, enslaved, lynched, miseducated, mass incarcerated, politically dominated us enough that you mean to tell me that after 404 years, you got black people running around playing defense attorney and cheerleader for white folks. You got black people running around after 404 years playing defense attorney and cheerleader. The fact that you got black people arguing for a white man to be considered the greatest of all time in an African art form speaks to how psychologically ill we are as a race of people. After all we have been through in this country, you got black men, black men running around playing defense attorney for white folks. One time for your mom, two time for your soul. And I'm going to do this before any of these magazines or any of these try and pick up what I said on Instagram and try and misconstrue my words and put their meaning on what I said. Sham, well, how can you say that about Dr. Umar? I'm the perfect one to say that to Dr. Umar. Do you want to know why I am? Because I look at him and I see him regurgitating the things that I saw as a child. I was born during the Black Panther's age. When y'all look at these black movies and y'all see the black ladies and afros and all that sh I lived that. My mother, my aunts, they used to do, my uncle pimps with the big hats on and all that, uptown, all that. Right? I lived that. Right? And the message that was then, you still sitting here looking for recognition, want to blame Eminem for something, and keep pointing it, but old oh, white man holding us down. Ain't nobody holding us, sir. Nobody's holding us. And like I said, before one of these other media outlets grab hold of my words, Pink Elephant Podcast right here with your man Shizzle, and they grab hold of my words and try and misconstrue what I'm saying, I saw all this. What you're preaching and what you're saying is the same thing. You're regurgitating the same issues of the past. All right, you're still trying to want recognition. All of these people that you have for you still, why, why, why do we have to wait till somebody else recognizes us and say, if this is your holiday, why don't we say amongst us, friends and family Friday, 
Nobody's stopping us from doing that. I'm no white man, no nothing. All that, oh, nobody's holding you back. Right now, the world is free for anybody. Look at these little young black men. They call the yo, phones. They call that big stack of money phones. So who's holding who? There's opportunity for black people to make money all overthrown through. But those that do make the money, do they do the right thing and regurgitate it back to the community? Like I said in my joint, you want to jump on Eminem? That's a soft target, sir. If you really want to discuss some issues, let's ask ourselves why Oprah Winfrey hasn't opened up at least a black school in every state of the nation. She opened them up in Africa. Tyler Perry has movie studios, Puff, Russell, all of them. What have they left for the community? You want to jump on this man and act like that's the problem? Let's talk about how we are still selfish. And the rhetoric that you're talking is the same things that I heard growing up as a child. And I'm nephew. I could call you nephew because I'm pretty sure I'm older than you. I guarantee it. The things that I see you saying... It still sounds to me like the narrative of old. They're holding us down. They're taking this. Ain't nobody taking nothing. We gave it to them. Why? Because of our not knowing. We gave it to them. Those contracts that all of us rappers signed and whatnot. We can't complain about that because nine-tenths of the law. You know what I'm saying? Your ignorance is n ain't going to get you your money back. Okay, so we gave it away. They didn't take it. We knew they were slick devils in the first place. And we got lawyers, and our lawyers really wanted to work for them. Because any lawyer would love to work for one of them big record company firms. Because that's a, you know what I mean? You'd get a straight check. They got 12, 13, 14, 15 lawyers to handle dumb things like litigation. So your lawyer may have wanted to just be down with them and show them that they were loyal to them more than they were to you. And he just overlooked a few things when it came time for you to discuss your contract with them. But we didn't get taken again. We gave it away. We gave everything else away. And what we're seeing and what you're saying is that what's the solution? What's the solution? You still screaming about what they did to us. The, the, look, like I said, son, I'm from an age I saw that. I was born the first year that black men were, had the right to vote, 1965. A black man couldn't vote before 1965, right? But then they weren't actually able to go to the polls till like 1970 because if they went to the polls, those White people were going to beat them the hell up. I lived through that. And so to see you still saying the same things that I've heard growing up, what's the solution? And the point of the Eminem is not... Uh, let's point it at the real thing, that we are crabs in a barrel as black people, as a culture. We've got those that have millions and billions of dollars and we love them because we like the way they Rolex look or the car that they drive. But we don't look at the real fact of what have you done for me lately. Dun, 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 dun. We overlook the main important facts. All right. So when y'all say Pink Elephant Podcast right here with your man Shizzle, like I said earlier, before these other media sites take my words as they always snatch my Instagram post and do whatever. It's fair use. It's not a problem because if I didn't say it, then I would, you know, you can use it. You dig what I'm saying? But I had to tell you why I'm the perfect person to say what I said to Dr. Umar. Because I was there. He's saying the same things that I saw, and that, but what he's saying is no problem. You still want to point fingers at people. Now, like I said, us in the hood did not hear Eminem was number one rapper. In the hood, we didn't hear that until you bring it to us. So what that means is you're, you're paying 
plenty of attention to the white media and you're regurgitating and you're actually helping them put that into the atmosphere. Because in the hood, us rappers, Eminem's down with us. We went, man, we don't give a fuck about what they talk about in that magazine. But you evidently read it, sir. You evidently read it. I don't pay. And now if you're this black activist, da, 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 why are you paying attention to what their media says? You have the same power with your voice. You're on every podcast. You're on this, that, and the third. You should be telling folks, listen, let's get, let's get our money together more. Let's, you know what I'm saying? You have that power. You have that power, you have the platform, but when you say something like that and I criticize you, I don't care what people say about me. Everybody got to get checked. But all I'm saying to you, I have ideas, I have things that I want to bring to the table, but I can't, I don't have the platform. The world looks at Shan like a dumbass rapper that gets drunk all day and he just be talking shit, which is absolutely the fucking truth. Who's gonna fucking literally totally listen to a motherfucker trying to be serious that's an asshole like me? I mean, I do have some significant points in the shit that I say, but most of the people look at me like I'm an asshole. Fuck this nigga. No teeth ass bastard, skinny motherfucker. Go eat some food and get some teeth. You know what I'm saying? So that pointing the finger at white folks is holding us down. There's so many little young individual, young rappers out here that you could be talking to and guiding them on a financial level on how to make wealth with the money that you say that we're not getting because of Eminem. This is what I'm, this, this is just shizzle talking, Pink Elephant Podcast, sir. Pink Elephant Podcast. Why are you not directing your energy towards those that do have the financial resources to change things in the community? Why keep talking? See, because the rhetoric that you speak, like I said, you can't gain my attention with that. You know the people that you gain attention with? The ones that can't read and write and the ones that have a job that you, you could say, I want a Big Mac and they look for the picture on the damn, what you call it? They look for the picture. Oh, you want a small, medium, or large Coke? Oh, where's that at on the cash register? Those are the ones that you would intrigue with your rhetoric. Your rhetoric. But those like myself that know and been there and know a little bit of something, it's like, yo, son, you be blowing smoke and mirrors. How could I not say you blowing smoke and mirrors? You fuck around pointing out attention at Eminem and you really ignoring the real problem. The real problem is that you're not targeting the right audience and trying to tell these little young men with all this money how we could change our black community around. <laughs> You too busy criticizing other things, reading them white folks' books. How can Shan say that about Dr. Umar? I'm the perfect one, as I said in the beginning, because all that things you preached, I lived it. The year I was born, that's the year black men got their right to vote, and they still couldn't vote till five, six, seven. Ten years after that, because they was going to get busted up at the head. If you go on and bring yourself over here to the uh, to the poles over here, nigger, we're going to bust you upside your head. You can come with Martin Luther, goddamn Jesse, and all them other motherfucking Black Panther ass. But we going to make sure you don't get a goddamn vote over here. That's history. I'm not mocking anything. I'm just regurgitating history. These things happen. I know it happened. My grandfather used to tell me, you better get the medical keeper. Make sure you got something to fall back on. I'm not of that age, Grandpa, but I thank you for that. And I used to tell my grandfather, I'm sorry. I'm not looking to fall back. If I fall back, I'm going to bust my head really hard and I'm going to Get up and I'm going to start again. But I'm not looking to fall back. So all that, I'm not preparing to fall back. Because when you prepare to have something to fall back on. And you're not getting it now. You're preparing for some shit to fall back on. Fuck out of here. 
fuck you even on that? Fuck that. I'm going to fall back. I'm going to bust my motherfucking head. I'm going to get up. Psh, keep moving. Fall back on. That's the attitude my grandfather gave me, sir. But he didn't know that he was the fire that drove everything within me to do and be and say and act the way that I do. I've achieved this success because he told me he wouldn't give me $250 to go to the studio. I went to my grandfather and $250 when I was 20 years old was like asking your mother for a million. Right? I said, Gramps, can I get $250 to go to the studio? Gramps said, no. He said, you can't make no record. That was the only fire that I ever needed in my life was for somebody to tell me that I couldn't fulfill my dream. And that came from my own blood, my grandfather. But it wasn't like he was trying to down me. He's just of a certain age. Work, 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 work. And you ain't making no record. And so... What I said, he said, you ain't gonna be able to do it. And that fire that clicked in me, that fucking spirit, I said, okay. Not only did I do it for no money, I started coming home with bags of money. I used to sleep all day, and he used to say, you better get up and, man, I'm not getting up. And I, and I would go to him, what's up, planet? I would go to Gramps, and I would say, all right. You want you want to see why I sleep all day? And then I would go do a show and come back. And they used to pay us in bags of cash. And I would come home that night after I did a show where he'd think I'm just out bullshit and doing this fucking rap shit. What the fuck you're doing? I used to come home with a bag of fucking money. And he'd sleep in the bed, open his door, dump a fucking whole bag of money on him. You take that shit, I'm going to sleep, and that's why I could sleep all day. Fuck it. I don't need to fall back, Gramps. Somebody telling me no was the greatest thing that I ever could do in my life, and it came from a person that I love, and I know, and I respect, and I know he didn't do it out of maliciousness or none of that. He was just like those folks that I'm talking about, Dr. Umar, forgot that we're regurgitating that same attitude right there, the white man, this, the white man, that, because I used to be my grandfather, the white man, white, man, whatever, fuck, them, fuck out of here with that shit, take this bag of money, nigga, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> And this is just part of my story, right here on the Pink Elephant Podcast. Like I said, for anyone that wants to say to me, how can you say that about Dr. Umar? I'm the perfect person to say that to Dr. Umar about Dr. Umar. Because he's speaking of things that I live for. And you can't tell a motherfucker that was there. My family, I saw Black Panthers. I saw when motherfucking... Uh, the holes on the corner, all that shit that y'all see, the Cadillacs, all that, I lived it. It's, it's a fantasy to you or something you watch on the television. Dr. Umar, I know you're not as old as me, but when I see you, sir, and you saying these things about a, a rap artist, you don't understand that he is not Mark Zuckerberg. That man had to put go through more. Eminem, I'm talking about. Eminem had to go through more and endure more just to gain the status that he had. Just by going to them fucking grimy ass clubs he had to go to in Detroit. And be the only Caucasian within eight miles. No pun intended. Eminem came up in the trenches with me and us and the rest of us. He is part of our clique. Like KRS one says, Eminem is down with us. He didn't come along and rob our culture. And so when you want to sit there, like I said, when you said that, you were talking to them, ooh, with the medium and thing to, because you can't get me with that. 
You want to talk about the robbery of our culture? Let's stop talking about the other people that I'm talking about. You pick soft targets, sir. The real issue is how come we've got so many black mobiles, moguls that made money and there's not one factory anywhere. Three of our, our, our most famous moguls could have bought up every dilapidated facility in Detroit. Made it a multi-complex, movies, all of that, jobs for everyone. Did they do that? No. Self-gratification is a motherfucker. Watch out for self-gratification. See me? I don't do shit to say, ooh, look what I did. I do shit to say, ooh, look what I did. Now let me show you what I did to do it. Right, and I'm going to give you an example because I'm about to give you a little tutorial on how I make this jewelry where people think it's fucking hard. It's not hard at all. I do it in my kitchen. I fed my kids already, so I turned my kitchen into my lab. And you know I be recording stuff, so I got my life. I'm going to show you how I do this. I got my plaster. Nothing that you can't get from Home Depot or Lowe's. This is plaster that you fix your walls with. That's plaster. This right here is casting grain that I'm, I make the metal with, that, that I made this. This is what I made it from. This, this jaw shit right here, right? I found my daughter has these silicone molds that if you pour hot wax in it, it doesn't melt. And so that's how I made this next fuck you piece, okay? And what I'm about to show you after on, on another joint, not this one, is I'm going to show you I'm going to melt this wax. You're going to have a shizzle tutorial to show you how the fuck I did it because I'm going to each one teach one. See, Umar, this is how day, but if I give you this knowledge, you're going to eat forever, son. So don't criticize me, Umar. You can check my record. This is what I've been doing, sir. Don't think I'm jumping on you. I'm just trying to tell you that I practice what I preach. I show everybody welding. I don't know about welding. I show them that. And I'm <laughs> got to have the whistle. But instead of me being that one and Dr. Umar, before you can criticize me, you can look down my timeline, son. I teach everything to everybody. Why? Because I'm in my own lane. I know and understand that whatever I teach the next man, he's going to gain his own clientele, his drive, and his momentum to succeed is way different from mine. He runs in different circles. He will never be able to be in the vicinity Right, but now, if you're a teacher of somebody, like myself, I like to teach folks. And if I taught you something and you got way better than me, I don't look at you and become jealous of it. I don't look at you and become jealous. I'm happy for the simple fact that that's what I taught you for. The teacher is always supposed to teach a student Way better that they're going to be way greater than they are. So you're not a great teacher if you want to keep your students below your level. So anyone that you teach anything and they, and they become better at it than you, pat yourself on the back because you planted that seed. And your clientele and their clientele is different. You attract different people. I attract people that like people with teeth. I don't attract people <laughs> that like to talk to people with teeth in their mouth. So the niggas are cut. But you attract who you fucking attract. Be like E Harmony. Get those that get you. All right. But it's your man Sugar. And now instead, of, like I just said, instead of me saying, "Ooh, look what I did." Uh, that matter of fact, fuck that nigga. Look what I did. I'm an asshole. And the girl said it perfect. She said, yo, Shan, that ring is perfectly imperfect. 
I'm not going to try and fix it anymore. I'm not going to try and put any more stones in it. Because if I tried to do that, it was it's going to mess up the whole aesthetics of this being imperfectly perfect. And I love her for naming that shit that. But now y'all going to see me pull another one. And if this is what you want to do, it's going to take a couple of dollars. This ring that you see on my finger, I carved it out of this shit. Handmade. Ain't no mold, but the next rings you see I'm doing the shit I went through with this shit. Fuck you, niggas. I ain't doing that shit again. I'm buying my mold straight from Etsy right now. They on their way. I got nugget rings coming. I got all kind of crazy rings coming. <laughs> Go on Etsy and say, uh, wax casting for rings. You're going to see how many rings come up. Diamond engagement rings. So, watch me, yo. I can make all kind of stuff and make everybody happy. Forget all that personal stuff. I don't want to do nothing personal because if you're going to be a business starting off. Now, this is a business tip for motherfuckers. I know that you want to be exotic and I know you want to be custom, right? You might be doing a little bit too much. What you need to do is find three or four things that you're good at right now that work for you, that sells for you, and boom, and continually do that. Because you want to be custom, that's going to slow down your production time for one. Now, if this three or four items is the thing that you sell, and you're not trying to do every article custom, you can make those four items in bulk. Boom! So when them orders come in, those are ready. Yes, you. but later on, you increase your... You know, you cr increase your selection. But do it in a manner that you're not overwhelming yourself. To the point where these four things, I'm telling you, y'all, I be listening to all, I don't just, I listen to Master P. When he tells you about what he said to his college professor, he said, yo, I want to be rich. And he said, yo, why is, why is McDonald's successful? And he said, he said, because it's consistent. You can get the same thing all the time, the same way. Consistency. And so what I'm telling you is only something that I've learned listening to those that I inspire me. I don't get this all, all this comes to me by myself. I get it from others. That, well, why would I not listen to Master P? Shit, I want a cereal of my own too, right? But come on now. Pass the knowledge on. Stop being selfish because the people that you're not teaching are not in your category. The only person that you should be in competition with is yourself. As far as I'm concerned, none of y'all motherfuckers can, can compete with me. And I'm going to be on my own tallywag right now. When I step in the room, literally, I'm the smartest motherfucker that's in there. Tell me I ain't. I don't give a fuck where I go. I'm the smartest nigga in the room. A lot of niggas want to be the richest nigga in the room. Pfft. I'm the smartest nigga in the room. Basically, everywhere I go. And that's not just me pulling my tally wag. Y'all see all the things that I do? I could walk in a room that got many men of many trades and they'll say, Shan, I want you to do this. Shan, I want you to do that. Shan, I want you to do this. Shan, I want you to make me a ring. I'm the smartest nigga in the motherfucking room. I know you don't want to hear that shit, but fuck it. It is what it is. <laughs> I see a few niggas disappear when I said that shit. You ain't smarter than me. That's the whole fucking point. Never think that anybody is smarter than you. That's what drove me to be what I am. That drove me to motherfucking do the things that I do. And how I used to do it. I used to go to the auto mechanic and I used to act dumb as a fuck. Oh, I don't know what's wrong with my car. And they'll tell me. I'll say, oh, I can't afford that. But he told me what's wrong with it. And the part that I needed cost $10. He told me $1,000. That was when I learned. What? 
Oh, I'm climbing underneath my car every time something breaks because I ain't going to have nobody tell me that again. Paul was a yoke for the connector, the uh, the uh, transmission rod, the, the drive shaft rod to the back of the Jeep. Ten mile apart, tried to charge me. And from that day, I look at everything. that If it's rocket science, I'm not fucking with it. But anything else... Take this attitude. I'm going to try it because I'm not going to look at another man and look at him like he's smarter than me. That might be a blessing or a curse to me. And it's not disrespectful to you. That's just what I think of myself. And that's what I fucking carry myself as. So I don't give a fuck how much money you got, nigga. Psst. You ain't smarter than me. I don't care whether you, we ain't going to go on rocket ship. I don't care whether you fix buses, whether you weld, whether you make jewelry, whether you do this, whether you do that, whether you build party buses, whether you electronic, all that shit. Nigga, I do all that shit. You know how you go to a store and says everything under one roof. And I cook, nigga. Shit, I cook for my kids every day. That's the plus. All right? <laughs> So, Dr. Umar, like I said, I'm not going to let you escape because this motherfucker started off with you. When you want to question, what do I do for my community? I may not have it monetarily, but jewel-wise, the things that my forefathers and foremothers passed on to me that made me me that I pass on to my children, I pass it on to these folks, free of charge. Don't give a fuck who look at me and say, well, Shan, you, you're a sucker because you're giving. They used to say, yo, Shan, why don't you charge people for this? Because the things that I learned, I learned it for free. And it's called pay it forward, son. Why do you think I'm so blessed? You don't see me stressing. Look at my skin. It ain't perfect. My nigga, my skin is clear. And your skin... Is one of the things that can tell you about how your health is going and shit like that. You do know what I'm saying? You, you got to pay attention to these things. Nigga, I'm 58 years old. Look at that shit. Look at that shit. I just got... Because <laughs> I ain't got no jippers. All right? Look at that shit. My spirit inside and outside is glowing. Because I'm happy, and I'm doing what I do, and I can live with myself, Dr. Umar. Because I'm not one of those savages and all of that other shit that take advantage of my folks. I make my own bread. I make sure that I teach other people how to make their bread if that's their choice. Fuck it, let's learn together like I'm about to learn with y'all in the kitchen when I go pour that regular plaster in that thing. Oh, I'm gonna make that joint. Might be tonight, might be early in the morning, but I bet you by 4 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow, you're going to see me holding that joint, and it's going to have them damn what you call us in there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, whatever. I'm just happy that at 58 years old, I can look at me and say, I know people that's younger than me that don't have the essence that I have. You dig what I'm saying? So I feel blessed in every way. I don't look at myself and think, ooh, nigga, I look dirty. Nigga, you look at them hairs. Look at my eyebrow, nigga. I got gray hair. How the fuck you gonna play dirty with gray hair in your eyebrow, son? Pink Elephant Podcast. Your man says we talk about real issues to deal with real people in real time. Look at that. All that baby face, all smooth skin shit don't mean no fucking thing, nigga. You old bastard. You got fucking <laughs> gray eyebrows. <laughs> and when your hair grow, that shit is missing all up here. And whatever's on the little side and whatever patches that come off, fucking that shit is total gray. You ain't got one black hair on your fucking head. <laughs> That's another thing you gotta learn to laugh at yourself. So when people laugh at you, they're not actually laughing at you. They're laughing with you. And in my case, I'm always laughing with you because that stupid ass no teeth joke you might have pulled or whatever joke you may pull on me and shit. I've got five jokes about myself that's 
better than that bullshit you said. So when you think you laughing at me, motherfucker, <laughs> I'm actually laughing with you. And I would tell you, my nigga, that was a good one. <laughs> and niggas have had me rolling about some no teeth shit. Ain't no lie. And I don't get mad at it and shit. But it's like, yo. <laughs> I had to give it to him, motherfucker. Because nigga, real shit is real shit. You got to be fucking comfortable with who you are. And I'm one of the most comfortable people in my skin. That you've witnessed in a long time. Whether I'm up, down, going through anything. Y'all know I'm going through some kind of other problems or whatever. But does it look like it makes me a difference? Does it look like it takes me off any of my axes at all? No. I'll deal with that when I have to deal with it. It's not a problem. And I'm gonna, it's already dealt with. But I still got to wait till they say let's get it over. <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble, my man, red man. <laughs> so like I said, in the beginning of this one right here, I should have, if you never even fucking knew who I was, Dr. Umar, and you want to know who this fucking little skinny, no teeth motherfucker talking stuff about me is, this video right here should explain to you enough that I walk the walk, I talk the talk, I practice what I preach, each one teach one, cause I'm not scared of none of you, why, because I only compete with myself, so me teaching everybody that I learned along the way, cutting quads, the, the other, the last project, I didn't have, if y'all didn't see it, we're going to get back to that because it's not hot enough outside. I cut up a quad. My nephew left some quads in my yard and I told him, I said, yo, nephew, you know me, son. If you leave him here too long, I'm going to cut him apart. What happened? He left him too long. I cut him apart. My son had an electric, uh, my son, matter of fact, let me go show y'all this shit real quick, because it ain't no big ass deal. You know what I'm saying? But I show you everything, and I built this from scratch. Me not knowing anything about welding, not knowing anything about any. Well, I, I can't say that. But Mr. Google showed me all this shit right here. I, anything that I didn't know and I didn't understand, Mr. Google showed me. This right here is a slingshot. Well, I say it's a slingshot because it's a car that my son had. It was electric, and I cut it apart. It got all the lights. You know your man, Shizzle. Look at that. It got the lights on it. I got a whole stack of lights. It's going to be lit up just like a regular quad is. And look. I'm putting that together from scratch. It don't even have the gas pedal. The gas pedals are sitting over there somewhere in that pile or whatever. Shizzle's Monster Garage. And I welded this right here. Made it myself from scratch. And as I did this process, I took y'all along with me. It didn't have this engine on it. That's not a, that's not a, a, a quad engine. That's a lawnmower engine that I bought from Harbor Freight. And so this right here is really a monster <laughs> machine. <laughs> for real, for real. Now let me show y'all my logo I made. Y'all see it? Shizzle's Monster Garage. Got a sprocket. It got spark plugs and it got a wrench. And this is how my Shizzle's Monster Garage. This is the opening scene for Shizzle's Monster Garage. And as you see, I've got set set up over there. I've got lighting in the in the roof, so when I'm ready to film my shit, I've got my camera sitting there ready with, you know, like they got with the little monitor, all my shit ready. I've got another set that's over there. I moved the couch and it's the swinging chairs, I put swinging chairs, and so I got a lot of things going on that I'm just letting little pieces go. But you see what I do, and everything that I do, I show y'all, it's just that easy. It ain't, ain't rocket science, because it's rocket science. You want to see what else ain't rocket science, but shh, you better not tell nobody about this shit. You better not tell nobody. Fuck around.
Look at me. And I know these niggas. Why? Well, fuck y'all, niggas. Niggas out here doing worse shit than this, motherfucker. So watch this. This is my little secret guard, y'all. Oh, shit. Did my shit fall? Look at that. Look at that, son. 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 Damn, I gotta put this one back up. That shit got so heavy, it's falling now. Let me move this tape over here. There you go. See that? Boom. Just move the tape and it'll stand right back up. Look at that. Look at that, son. Look at that. Look at that nugget. Look at that. It ain't more than I could get fucking snanged up for. <laughs> and I'm growing it for medicinal purposes, okay? <laughs> I do a lot of shit, son. A lot of shit. I just didn't want to make that a tutorial for y'all because then they would know I had that shit going on and uh, whatever. Not like I'm a big ass motherfucker, but that's not something that I wanted to show y'all. <laughs> this is how you grow this in your basement. <laughs> but that's my own personal shit for any fears or whatever. Fuck you, I ain't trying to get rich off that shit. Got me fucked up, nigga. But I'm going to smoke the shit out there. As soon as I zip that zip up, that smell that came out. And I order my seeds. But I can tell you this. I order my seeds directly from the Netherlands. It's a spot on the internet called high underscore supply dot com. Like, <laughs> nigga, look at that. I just put you on to the plug again, son. Because I'm not stingy. High Da either it's a dash or underscore highsupplies.com company over in the Netherlands every strain or whatever the <laughs> you want they'll send it right to your mailbox how you think I got those right in my mailbox ain't nobody looking for two and three seeds <laughs> All right, so I just gave you the plug, so. All right, and I'm not even worried about smoking that shit. I'm just going to let it grow to see what, how far I can just grow it. I want to see the buds get this big. And what I noticed about it, the buds will get to a certain point, and then the buds will start budding buds. Like, what the fuck? That's how come them shits is all fat and round like that. What up, yo? That's how come them shits is fat and round like that because those buds start busting buds. And then I use that Fox Farm fertilizer. I don't use nothing but Fox Farm and egg whites in my water. You know what I'm saying? So look at me teaching my folks again. Where my plug at? Because that shit gonna turn off on it. I ain't got time for that fuck nigga shit right now. It's a good one. <laughs> it's a good one. It should be gone. And there that go. No, I just showed them the slingshot in the basement just now. It's not. And look, and what? And look, like I say, sometimes you gotta understand that you you can't be the king all the time. A good king knows when he have to fucking bow down and play servant to a subservient uh, to a, a higher king, right? And my higher king is this: that when I go to a network. They don't want to see me with no teeth. They don't want to see me talking. See, y'all accept me like this. But I'm looking at the bigger picture and the bigger world. And I'm a psychological motherfucker. Sometimes you can lose a motherfucker's interest just because of the way you look. I don't care if you was telling them how to get a million dollars and shit. And was saying, yo, it's free. Just go over there and dig it up. They're not going to listen to you because they do not like the way you look. Those are the people that are... <coughs> you dig what I'm saying? Fuck that. They deal on your appearance. And I know this next venture that I got going on. When I was building these things, you didn't need to hear me say anything because I've got gas masks on or welding masks and I'm doing whatever and you see me building it. I don't have to talk to the camera then. But when it comes time for me to use those sets that I just showed you in the basement, I got a set in my living room. I got two sets in my living room. I don't play. I don't play for real. 
I got my house is my my studio. All of, look at that. That's a set right there. That's another set right there when I put them things in the barbershop bus. But that's another set. I'm I've got different sets for different shows around my house already. As if I wouldn't come in my studio. My studio look good enough for a set. You dig what I'm saying? So I've got sets and everything I do forms for that. But I'm showing you, your man should be doing his thing. But that's part of my show. And I also have the, uh, the, the where, where about myself to know that the normal public don't want to listen to it. I don't care what I'm saying. I could be telling them I got $20,000 for you. Just come get it. They don't want to hear it because they deal with the physical. If you do not, if they do not like, it's more appeal, if it doesn't appeal to their eye, and it doesn't appeal to their human nature, and it doesn't fit in their shit, they're not going to give it one chance. Y'all will give me a chance on my TV show, but the rest of the world be like, who the fuck this no teeth nigga trying to show me how to work? So before they got the chance to get the knowledge that I'm trying to, they going to chuck it off. Cause now who the fuck this no teeth ass nigga trying to show me how to build some shit? Psh. Lesson to be learned. Never judge a book by its cover. All right? So I had to go do this for you, Dr. Umar. As like I said, people might say to Shan, you a rapper, Shan. Who are you to question Dr. Umar? I might not have a fucking doctrine, son. But I motherfucking live the shit you talking about. When I look at you saying the things that you say, you still act like you trying to ask for fucking recognition from the folks you keep dogging. Why are you worried about what they writing about Eminem in their white magazines? And then come bring it to us. Like I said, we don't deal with that shit. None of us in the hood heard Eminem was the number one fucking rapper nowhere because we don't listen to their fucking white rhetoric. But we do know and understand in the hood that Eminem is down with us. Eminem gives props to all the folks that motherfucking gave him inspiration. And at a time when he could have been up there talking about anything else that he wanted to do, he pulled out a list a motherfucking black, black Dr. Umar artist on his time to shine and gave many of us props where these people, those white people that you're talking about would have never even heard our motherfucking names if not for this Eminem who's robbing us of the culture. He actually fucking expanded it a little bit because people know who MC Light is and how she inspired him. They believe me, unlike black people, when they hear something, they want to go and investigate. And so there's some people out there that motherfucking you say, oh, and motherfucker that looked into MC Sham, that looked into MC Light, and looked into many of others that he named when he had his moment to shine and didn't have to say a fuck ass thing about this black culture we call hip hop. Dr. Umar, I appreciate you and your rhetoric. And I still have mad love and respect for you. But I'm not one that's going to bite my tongue. Right here on the Pink Elephant Podcast. Ain't nothing standing between you and success. But I'm airing opportunity. Now you go on all these other podcasts and whatnot like that. I'm more serious. If you want to talk about serious things. And you want to get down to it. Your doctrine means nothing to me. I have experience, but I respect your doctrine because you earned that. But your doctrine doesn't make me look at you as you're better than me. Because like I said, son, ain't no motherfucking man better than me. I don't give a fuck. What you, what, you, what you specialize in again? Give me two weeks, nigga. I got Professor Google. I bet you I'll come back with some shit on your ass. You'll be like, oop, 
I paid to learn that. This nigga got Professor Alexa. Tell me what Doctor Umar said about blah 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 blah. I need to know about that quantum physics and that da blah blah blah. I had an answer in two seconds, sir. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So do what you do. How it is. But if you want to really motherfucking talk that shit, there's no hold bar. I'll cut the cursing out for you on that day. I'll be very respectful because your audience doesn't deal with me on a regular basis. But I'll be very respectful. But we can debate whatever you want to do. You do all them other podcasts and eh, buffoonery, whatever the fuck y'all be doing sometime. And I'm not saying every place you've been was on some buffoonery shit, but you dig what I'm saying? That shit you were saying about Eminem was some buffoonery, and Joe tried to tell you, I'm just trying to say it. I'm just saying, Joe, I love you, Joe Buttons, I love you. Joe Button, you know, motherfucker, we go back to motherfucking blog TV days, nigga. <laughs> I love Joe Button, but Joe tried to tell you, son, you want, hold up, hold up, hold up. You ain't gonna hold me up, so I'm gonna let you speak. You ain't gonna have to hold me up. <laughs> All right? So if you ever want to motherfucking get a conversation with your man, she'll just come right here. Pink Elephant Podcast. We can do a Zoom. However, I'm not trying to get any props off of you and trying to make anything or off of your name or something like that. But I think that the black community would have an enjoying, entertaining thing having us talk. Just talk. As black men with differences of opinion and still respect each other in the end of the day. But it'll be more about how can we lift up our community. You have the reach. You have the ideas. And I have ideas, but I don't have the reach. Okay? So when I'm talking this shit about you, I'm the perfect one. Because I seen, saw, and I lived the things that you're talking about and the things that you keep trying to blame. I mean, I love you. You're going to keep us in the dark for another 50 years, sir. You're going to keep us in the dark for another 50 years, sir. And I'm not going to take that statement back because that's thinking that you have to think that we need to be uh, recognized by anyone else. What? What? Recognition is this. Oh, we're going to sign something into Bill. And what they do is take a pen. What the significance of this? They take a pen on a piece of paper here. 30 days for niggas in February. Why do we have to wait for them to recognize? We can make our own holiday. We don't even have to deal with their calendar. Matter of fact, we do have to deal with their calendar because it deal with time and space. But we can name our own day. And I say we start by friends and family Friday. Let's get back to fucking being a family. I hate Christmas. I hate fucking Thanksgiving. Why? Because it's not like I used to remember. It's not about us all. Family members from different fucking branches of the family would be at one place. At one time. My grandmother's house. You'd have the pawpaws, the mokies, and everything in between. Right? But then, after Granny and Grant, well, Grant was still around. After Granny died, oh, that stopped. That's what I'm used to. And I want us all to get back to that. That motherfucking, that family shit. Y'all don't understand what that shit is about, son. You don't understand what that's about. You mad at your cousin because he, cause he pays you, or you, he ain't pay you back your hundred dollars. Yet you wanted to celebrate Christmas. Oh, you spent your money on everybody, but Christmas bring us together spending money. But the other 364 days of the year, you mad because somebody didn't pay you back some money. That money ain't important. It's more about family. Forgive, forget, family and friends Friday. Y'all know we got family. We can just sit on, yo, if you don't know, whatever you do, country, they play shit with two dice. Nigga. New York niggas come to my shit. Even in you country niggas, we using three dice. And I'm only going to tell you the rules one time. You get two and a number, motherfucker. And if you get two and a number, that's a one. And I get two and a number, that's a two. I win, bitch. <laughs> I don't know about all that crap. Seven, eleven, do, do, do. I don't know about that. 
but I'm willing to learn. Fuck that. Come hang out on Fridays and shit. Teach me that shit. I don't know how to play tunk, nigga. I'm a spades ass nigga. Show me how to play tunk and gin. <laughs> it should be fun. Imagine trying to teach me anything. You know I'm an asshole all day long. <laughs> so, it's just going to be a fun experience trying to fuck with me, trying to show me some new shit, nigga. You're going to be trying to cheat me the whole game. What the fuck that mean? <laughs> Friends and Family Friday, Dr. Umar, you're still looking for recognition. You have a voice, you have the power, you have people that you influence. There are people that are willing for you to get on their podcast, and that's how I got to see what you were talking that bullshit about, Am on somebody's podcast. Now... If you was to change up a little bit and say, boom, because like, nigga, like I say, you a smoking mirror ass, nigga, because you saying the same shit I heard my grandfather say, nigga, that fucking message you preaching is old. The white man, the white man, nigga, get the fuck out of here with that shit. <laughs> All these little rich ass black niggas and you concentrating on one white rapper, fuck out of here. You should be concentrating your motherfucking energy on trying to show these young little rich black rappers. Rappers, how to motherfucking sustain that money they got not to just fucking throw it away if you're gonna throw it away get a fucking receipt and charge it on your fucking corporate shit if you're just gonna go to the club tell that nigga I'm gonna give you 15,000 you're gonna give me a receipt for this motherfucker right but the money ain't gonna leave your club and they don't give a fuck they gonna write you a fucking receipt and it's gonna be written under so and so and so whatever your incorporation is now what do you do that's a night of spending 20,000 fucking dollars right and I'm gonna show you how it works you spent $20,000 throwing that shit in the fucking club. Who gives a fuck? You write it off. Why? Because it came from your corporate account. Your corporate account does not earn any interest. You could put $20,000 in it today. Ten years from now, if you don't put another dime into your corporate account, it's going to still say 20 fucking thousand. It's a non-interest bearing account unless they change the rules. But as far as I know, my shit don't bear interest. And when it do bear interest, at least as much money as in that motherfucker, it'd only be like two, three dollars. It'd be like, uh... <laughs> that shit will say interest a dollar ninety seven. Like what the fuck, nigga? I got more money in that shit. Fuck you, nigga. I got a dollar ninety seven in my change jar. You bastards. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But spending that money and getting a receipt makes it able for you to take that shit to your fucking re your your tax advisor. And since it's underneath your corporate umbrella. And you can also say you were entertaining clients, prospective clients. You can you can get away with calling them prospective clients because they're not your clients yet. But in order to do business, you got to spend money. See what I'm saying? So you can use all of that fucking money in a wiser way. Are you telling these kids this, Dr. Umar? That's why we need to talk, son. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Come on now. Love art music and real rap. Look, if you ever want me to come on there, all you gotta do is fucking holler at me. I don't have no... Listen. Everything that anybody... They used to say, Oh, you won't come on my podcast because I'm not that big. It doesn't matter. I remember one podcast that I went on with my homie. Right, I ain't gonna mention his name, I ain't gonna put him out there. But before I got on his podcast, and he was just, <laughs> in, his, in his mind, a nobody. When I got on his podcast, and they saw that, yo, Shizzle is your man like that, he started getting interviews from people that he couldn't talk to and touch before. And so for me, it's like, I don't care if you got one listener, two, five. Right? That's five more people that weren't listening to me. I love you in Christ too. That was five more people that weren't listening to me. And so, you could be the smallest. 
no, what you call it, anything, if I get on your podcast and it can help you, you know it's going to be interesting, you know what I'm saying, it's going to be very interesting, and and look, where you do, look, write this down, don't play around, because I don't take care of this, I've got people that take care of these things for me, my media, Jeff is my media agent, it's called B T P underscore media btp media write this down nephew or, or niece i don't know which one because i'm not even trying to go there right write it down if you want me on your podcast there's no money involved if you want to tip jeff for hooking it up that's okay but i don't charge you right you get to BTP underscore media and set it up. Because I don't do them things. Jeff will call me. Yo, you know you got an interview today. I'd be like, oh shit, I forgot. And that's why you keep people around you. And Jeff is a good motherfucker. Jeff don't even live around me. I've never met Jeff personally face to face. But I know Jeff for fucking like five years. We've been doing business. And why have I been doing business with a person that I have not actually physically seen face to face? Because in good faith, anything that he ever said that he was going to do for me, he has done. No questions asked, whatever, blah, 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 blah. But where I'm going and where I'm, I'm not going to forget Jeff. Because when it, when, when it comes time and I blow up in this TV shit and whatever and motherfucking, uh, what you call it, Jimmy Connell or whoever the fuck is the nighttime niggas want to fuck with me. They got to call Jeff, son. <laughs> From this day on, if you want to talk to me, BTP Media is the motherfucker to talk to. I don't handle that shit. When you get to a certain level, that certain shit you don't handle. And you put your friends and, and, and people you trust. And I do. I just did an interview yesterday with Cha Cha Mystique. We was on a damn, what you call it? Two hours. Two hours. That's how interesting I mean. You know what I'm saying? What's up, the Quan? I'm still trying to do things for the culture. Look. So you know my man. Hold up, you the Quan. You say you signed to Onyx, right? Tell my man Fredro Unk said what's up. Fredro and Sticky is my man's in them, yo. <laughs> I love them two niggas, yo. <laughs> Fredro and Sticky is my man's in them, yo. For real, for real. Not like you knowing me. That shit might motherfucker. Nigga, get the fuck out of here. You fucking know that fucking crazy ass nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they love me. And in reciprocation, I love them just the same, yo. That, it's like, I, I just can't say. It's like the, the folks that in this rap game... If you good with them, you good with them. I don't have no problem. All the shit y'all see me talk, you figure that I would show up somewhere where Chris is there and whoever else I talk shit about. Motherfucker, oh, she ain't gonna have a problem. No. All of these people know my mouth. They've dealt with it since I was fucking 20 years old. Salt and Peppers and everybody else. Chuck D's and everybody. Run DMC. Any motherfucker. In this game. Knows how Shan is. And so when y'all see me talk shit on the internet. Like some of y'all thought it was fucked up. But then y'all see motherfucking I get with, with homie. And he like yo talk your shit. Cause niggas know I talk my shit. Nigga I'm not gonna bite my motherfucking tongue for no nigga. The fuck out of here. You put your pants on one leg at a time. Just like me son. If you don't put your shit on. If you don't jump up and do this shit. Wah! Nigga, fuck you. You just like me. I don't deal with that bullshit right there. Fuck out of here. You just like me, nigga. But when you do find a nigga, excuse me, that puts his pants on two legs at a time, don't tell me about it. Bring me to that nigga. I want to witness that shit. 
Cause mm -hmm. nigga, if you jump up and put your legs on two motherfucking legs at a time, motherfucker, I'ma be your biggest advocate. This nigga right here is God, son. <laughs> I'ma forsake all of my motherfucking. You shouldn't motherfucking have no graven image before me that they wrote in the Bible. So I will put you on the motherfucking fuck what the scriptures say, nigga. This is God right here. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope y'all got a laugh out of that shit. I hope you don't take that shit too serious. Because sometimes you got to fucking laugh, nigga. Laughter is the fucking key to your soul. All right? My kids up there. Oh, I know what I was doing. I'm getting ready to fucking print out this. Fuck you. That's going to go across the name piece and letters and shit. I'm about to print it out. My print plug, man. I'm getting ready to turn on the daggone uh, computer and make me a brand new thing that I'm gonna add on to that fuck you finger. Look at that. Every time I put my hand up, I'll be looking at that shit. That's a shizzle made, son. Imperfectly perfect. Right? But I'm getting ready to put a fuck you because the. The, the the finger in that shit says fuck you right but I wanna I wanna cause because I've got plenty of options I don't have to pay a jewel to do this shit I could do what I want I don't know whether I want to fuck you to hang from the bottom underneath the finger or do I want it to say fuck you across the fingers but guess what it don't matter cause I make this shit myself and I don't gotta ask a motherfucker <laughs> I'm getting ready to open up 3D Blender, right? I'm getting ready to open up Blender. So my mouth, huh? So my mouth, huh? I'm going to restart the computer. And I'm going to write the letters, fuck you, in 3D Blender. For something with the TV, it ain't got nothing to do with the computer. I might just, it don't matter, it's all the same thing. I'm going to open up Blender, and I'm going to make the word fuck you. I don't know how I'm going to do it in script, but, 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 but whatever. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to show you how your man shit will do it. Like I said, it ain't about, ooh, look what I did. I'm going to show you how I did it. Give me a little while. Let me sit back, relax, drink another whistle or two. Get myself in the mode. The kids are all done. I decided I'm going to give them a bath in the morning. And cause we ain't going nowhere anyway, so they can wait till the morning. They ain't been nowhere in two days. Fuck that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hold up, monster. Let me show you. I don't know what the fuck that was. And I'm going to pour it tonight, too. It's going to be this big. And it's that thick, but it's not really actually that thick because it has that rim around it. And those holes that you see are where the gems go. Those holes are where the gems go at. So I'm getting ready to go in the kitchen and I'm going to film it for y'all. And I'm going to take y'all through the process of how we do it. Alright? Well, how I do it. So this way you can do it and shit. Like, it ain't no big deal. Now, look at that shit. Imagine that motherfucker hanging on a nigga chest, yo. Bam. Diamonds everywhere. Well, masonites everywhere. Clink, 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 clink. <laughs> Your man shit ain't got no sense. But, I'm gonna take y'all through this journey. And like I said, I don't do things to say, Ooh, look at me. I say, I do things to say, Ooh, look at what I did. And look what you can do too. And so, we are gonna make this motherfucking piece. Y'all gonna go every fucking step of the way with me. From me. I mean, it's gonna be in cuts and shit. Cause I ain't got that much time on my phone. Right? It's going to be in cut, but you, we're going to pour this shit. We're going to pour the plaster on it. We're going to let the plaster get hard. We're going to melt the wax out of the plaster. See, once you put the plaster on this, it's called lost wax. Look it up if you want to be interested. Lost wax. So you put this in between a plaster mold and you heat it up. And whatever this is, after the plaster gets hard 
and this wax melts out of it. There's a hollow hole in the middle of it that looks exactly like this. And when you pour your molten on it, it fills up all of them spaces and you get something like this. <laughs> and I made this out of this. Hand carved, no bullshit. And where I fucked up is I tried to put too many gem holes in this shit, being a novice. And so where I put the gem holes and when I put it in the plaster, the shit just melted and it made it look like this, which is imperfectly perfect. Okay? But I learned something from that and I don't got no time to keep fucking with this. This looks good enough and shit. Look at it. Looks good enough. Made by your man Shizzle. And so I'm going to move on and do other things. So as I said, as I get back to the main subject of my motherfucking shit, Dr. Umar, if you would like to question who I am and why I have any right to say anything about you because I was there, sir. And when I look at you, and if you was to have dialogue with me, and I don't need your dialogue, but if you was, you would understand and hear what I lived through. You would hear firsthand. Forget these little two-button things. I'd give you some knowledge that would add to your fucking toolbox, sir. I was there. I'd done it. The year I was born was the first year the black man got a chance to vote. Martin Luther King, the Black Panthers. When you look at these old ass black exploitation movies, my aunts and my mother used to dress like that with the big Afro wigs and all that shit. I was there, son. The Cadillacs with the pimps and all that shit. I lived that. And to hear you say the things that you do is like, uh, you keeping us where the fuck we was at because you just regurgitating the same shit that they said that got us nowhere blaming white motherfuckers for us not being nowhere. Let's blame the black niggas that made all this fucking money. Why they ain't put no fucking factories in the hood. Why they didn't motherfuckers that look, gotta give a big shout to those like like Slim Thug. He bought a fucking community. He bought, I don't know who else, see, I didn't, I don't go through BTP, yo, there go BTP right there, look, see BTP, that's who you do, BTP Media Group, BTP Media Group, cause I don't do that shit, but he bought a fucking complex, I don't, I don't check up on what every other rich nigga do, but if you a rich motherfucker and you did some shit like Slim Thug did and, and, and whatever the fuck else, you get props. Nigga bought a fucking community. I wish I could buy a fucking community. The big house over here, y'all niggas don't even come over here. Y'all can have the rest of the shit. Don't fuck my shit up. But don't come over here with that bullshit. Keep all your music, all that other fuck nigga shit over there. This my shit right here. I wouldn't even gate my shit. My shit would be a part of what the fuck y'all live in. But... Since we would be such a community, we're going to take care of our shit. We ain't going to let our shit get dilapidated like a motherfucker. Because this is our shit. Why the fuck we going to let it get fucked up for? That's that motherfucking word called gentrify. You let your shit get fucked up and fix it up for another nigga to come take it over. It's your man, Shizzle. One time for your mind. Two times for your soul. I'm out of this bitch. Appreciate you. Dr. Umar. I don't have no motherfucking qualms with you, nor do I give a fuck about what people are saying. Oh, I, how can you? I'm the perfect motherfucker to say something to you because I was there. You ain't talking to one of these motherfuckers that don't know what you're talking about. I know about Selma, all of that. And when you sit here and you want to say that white people... I, look, I can even say to you this, but my premonition of the white rappers of this is that we as black people once again fucked up so much that all of that drill rap shit ain't happening because it's going to get you indicted. And all of that fucking talk about how you shot a motherfucker, that trend is over now. So rap is dying. 
And if you look on the internet and you see these so-called white people that you talk about with the cowboy hats in the middle of the fucking cow field spitting lyrics, they spitting lyrics to where we couldn't even keep our own culture on a motherfucking uh, poetic, lyrical uh, thing to where it didn't turn to mumble rap. And now... All of these folks, they families own the motherfucking companies and shit. And they're going to put them on and their friends and their friends and their friends and their friends. Because we dropped the ball again, Dr. Umar. We dropped the ball again. It ain't about motherfucking niggas that's taking nothing from us. We didn't recognize and we're preaching a little bit too late to fix the problem. We're preaching way too late to fix the problem. It's a rabbit hole that's so fucking deep that it can never be put. You can't put dirt back in it. Because check this out. When it boils all down to it, it, it comes down to that gang affiliation shit, Dr. Umar. How can we ask our young nephews to make a truce and come in the same room with a man that killed my brother? Killed my nephew. Killed my motherfucking... You know what I'm saying? My mans and them. We are not going to be able to it. So what the, what the message that we should be preaching, Dr. Umar, is to learn from those lessons. Those little beasts are never going to fucking be what you call it. But let's stop it right now. Stop shooting at them. You stop shooting at you. If you want to talk, you will find out that you bloods and you crips have the same fucking problem. And your enemy and your enemy is the same. And that enemy is making you think that that motherfucker is an enemy. That's the message that we should be telling them, Dr. Umar. If you're not getting what I'm saying. Because there's too much bloodshed amongst our little young nephews for them to forgive that shit. So we can't tell them to forgive that shit. What we can say is let's not perpetrate this fucking atrocity on our people any further. Let's put the fucking guns down so that in three years, five years from now, that animosity of them deaths won't even fucking be remembered. These gangs are fighting over shit that happened in the 60s. They don't even know why the Bloods and Crips are against each other. Or did they bother to study that the Bloods and Crips weren't invented to fight against each other? The Bloods and the Crips weren't invented to fight against the Morenos and the, the whatevers in L.A., the white boy gangs back in the 60s. That wasn't a thing for the Bloods and the Crips to do whatever. But then the economic shit and the territory shit came in the same shit. Look, that's what I say. Gloves up, nigga. <laughs> Gloves up. Although I'm a skinny nigga, I like that shit. Nigga, I love when nigga hit me. That just turned me to the credible Hulk. Like, what the fuck, nigga? What? I love that. The contact. Fuck all that shooting. Pussies can shoot, nigga. You can close your eyes and kill a nigga. But when you looking in a nigga face, when you looking in a nigga face, my nigga, and my thing is this. This is where you start learning who you are as a man. And that's how the alpha males become alpha males. If you ever look at a fucking pack of fucking lions. That's how the alpha male become the alpha male. Because he had to fight all these other motherfuckers to become the alpha male. Okay, so it's gonna be fighting, nigga. If you ain't strong enough to be the alpha male, just take your position in the pack, motherfucker. And that's where a lot of you motherfuckers don't understand. You want to be the alpha male, but you so stupid that you work for another motherfucker talking about I'm a boss. Nigga, shut the fuck up. You can never be an alpha male because your brain don't think that way. And so since your brain doesn't think that way, stay in your position. Be thankful for what you are and use your position to be the best at whatever it is. 
You're not made to be a boss. Boss ain't something that you fucking just think to that. Oh, I'm a boss. You gotta be born with that shit. You gotta be born with the attitude of a go-getter. You gotta be born with the attitude of a motherfucker. You just don't fight. There ain't no shit you can buy. You can't buy this shit. It's some shit that you were born with. And guess what? Each and every one of you were born with it. It's just how it was developed. And whether you still allow yourself to be shunted in your education when you've got Google and Alexa, that's your problem. You can always expand and rise above the position where you're at today. Who you are today doesn't define who the fuck you're going to be tomorrow. So everybody that's looking for at you, oh, you a thief, you a stealer, fuck you. You know what you do? You're not a thief no more. You're not a, you're not a liar no more. Don't deal with them. You know why? Because they still want to see you for who the fuck you were. And only time that you are going to grow is when you're around people that recognize the change in you. Those that recognize the change in you and that are willing to accept and give you the chances that those who still look at you like who you are fucking three years ago, fuck them. You be around the people that are willing to accept your change and your growth. Because as long as you're around those people that remind you of who a thief you was or a liar you was and all that shit, you're never going to grow. You're always going to have anger within you. Which is nobody's fucking fault because you was the fucking thief and you was the fucking liar and we don't owe you fucking anything. But if I was your family, I'd give you the chance to show me that motherfucker, I don't give a fuck what you did. Give a fuck about that. You tell me you doing this. All I got is your word. And as a man, and as a man... All you have is your word and your motherfucking balls. And if your word is no good, you might as well cut your fucking dick off, my friend. Because all you have is your word and your balls. Alright? So if your word ain't no good, your motherfucking balls, cut them off, bitch, because you ain't you less than a man. So you see, Dr. Umar, the lessons that I teach and the things that I say to my people? I'm on the same mission that you are, just in a different aspect, because I live the shit that you talk about. <laughs> okay? One time for your mind, two time for your soul, your man shizzle with a whistle. I hope I was as entertaining to you as I was to myself, because I entertained the fuck out myself just now. Okay? And I appreciate y'all for coming in, journey and progression. I love you. Motherfucking one true monster. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why your ears bleed, monster? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm out of here. Shit, I got some shit to do. I got. Oh man, I gotta turn the TV on, turn the computer on, and make this fuck you for my print. Like I said, look, I could either make it say "fuck you" across here, which would block the "fuck you" finger. So I think I'm gonna go with it, hanging at the bottom, and so, and it's gonna be. This is not a mock-up of it. It's just going to be like a two-big piece thing like this. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. I know why I could do it like, like that. Because nobody can't tell me I can't, motherfucker. <laughs> One time for your mind, two time for your soul. You understand between you and success. But every opportunity, Dr. Umar, I love you. And I have no animosity against you. So don't think that anything that I've said in this fucking podcast right here. Pink Elephant Podcast. What your man show? I deal with real issues. that deal with real people in real time. So Dr. Umar, I'm not one of these snakes. that I look at you as my black brother. But we also have to agree to disagree at times. Okay? Why is my... Oh, computer ain't on. <laughs> we all have to disagree and, 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 you know, agree to disagree and be men and respect each other's opinion. And I know I can learn a lot of things from you as well as you hearing my opinion. You may learn some things from me. And so don't think that I'm making this shit just to be a fucked up nigga just because you in the limelight. Oh, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a clout chaser. But when I hear some shit, I ain't got no problem talking about whoever the fuck said it. That's all I'm saying, son. <laughs>
<laughs> he gonna be like, yo, why the fuck this nigga keep calling me son? Because I'm a New York nigga, son. I say, you same thing. You understand? You ain't gonna take no offense to it, son. <laughs> if my motherfucking computer do not motherfucking work, where the fuck, what the hell is going on here? I need my mouse to work. What's up? Let me turn that off and turn it on again. I didn't hear it. I'll figure it out. I'm getting ready to make that fuck you on the bottom. See, this one is an ace of spade or something. Right? But it's going to say, it's going to be way littler. And it's going to say, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. I'm out of here. One time for your mind, two time for your soul. You understand between you and success. But every opportunity, time to go get it. Let's go.